Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. Jamie here, the Furniture Flippa. In this episode, we are painting some furniture with the Homerite Super Finished Max that I just purchased on Amazon. We're gonna see if this thing is any good. So, everything you see here is what came with it in the box. So you got the manual, the parts and spray tips, and you got the gun. We're gonna quickly go over the pieces before getting started on painting some furniture. All right, so these are different spray tips. I guess for different products you can spray various paints and comes with a little wrench here. I'll show you guys that soon. This is the other, so on the gun there's a black piece. So apparently the black is for fine spraying and this one's I guess for a wide spray. I feel like you use this on walls and like fences outdoors, but we're not gonna need that for furniture. So it's pretty much garbage for us. Alright, and this is the brush that cleans the gun. Simple. We'll use that later when we are done painting. What's pretty cool about this gun is in between coats, instead of pouring your paint out, just put the top on, tighten it up, and then you don't need to worry about it drying up on you. That's pretty cool. I like that. Okay, so there are pieces on the gun as well. We have this tube that simply just pops off. This is what the paint will get sucked up when in the can or in the bucket. And what we do, this thing can spin, so if you're painting upwards, you want that spun backwards. But if you're painting things downwards, you can just have it like that in the front. So here's the front of the gun. where The paint comes out right here. This thing twists. This is what gives you different angled paint spray when you're shooting. We'll show you that later when I do some test sprays and then we'll get to spraying some furniture in a bit. Also you have this piece that spins off here. This is how you this is how you change the spray tips and clean the gun later on. So here's the black piece I was also talking about. So this is for fine spraying. The yellow one is for wide spraying. We don't want to be using that on furniture. So I'm gonna lay that down. This is just some piece with the springs. I guess this is what holds your pieces on nice and tight. And then we have this. This is our spray tip. We have three of these. This is all for different spraying types. So to get this off, we're gonna have to use this wrench. But when we're spraying furniture, I plan to use the green one. I will test it out if it works fine. That's the one I'm going with. In the book, it also tells you, I'll show a little photo right here, all the different spray patterns and products you can use with these different pieces. All right, let's take this spray tip off. Once you get it loosened a bit, you can just do it by hand. And there's also, I don't know if you can see it good, but you have these little tips inside your spray nozzle, or your, your spray tips that need to be changed out, I guess, with whatever color you're using. So I guess these, this is what the small side of this little wrench is for. There we go. And that just spins off by hand. You put the little one on first and then this one goes over the top. We're gonna to be using the green one anyways, but I just wanted to show you that you can swap them in and out when you're using different products and when you're doing different painting projects. All right, let's put this green spray tip back on. So there's a little thread here. You take the small spray tip piece. We're just gonna start by hand. We don't want to strip the piece here, so simply attach like that. I will take this just to do a little tighten. There we go, don't snap that piece off, it feels doesn't feel super strong. All right, now grab the bigger spray tip piece, and all we're gonna do is slide that on over, spin that into the thread behind it. So tighten it as much by hand, and then we can simply grab our wrench that's included, and just we'll start tightening it up. And perfect. And let's not forget this piece goes on first, so these little four Circles here go right into the four pieces on the gun. And then we choose the fine 
spray piece. And we have this piece that hooks that just goes right over the top and spins on and tighten that up. And one more thing, after you have your spray tip and everything connected up top, don't forget we need to attach this piece here. We're just gonna, it goes right in here. Just push in, give it a little bit of a push. Make sure it's in there so it's air airtight when we're spraying. And then we're good to add paint. And we just hook this on and we're good to go. All right, so I'm using some Bare Scuff Defense paint. I had this left over from a recent project. We're just gonna dump this right into the paint holder. But what we need to do, use a strainer. I got this piece at the dollar store. It's just a strainer for your sink and it strains paint perfectly. After pouring my paint in, I add about 10% water. Then I make sure to stir for at least one minute. All we need to do now is attach the paint bucket. And now let's test spray. So there's a dial here on the gun. So this is a pretty important piece when spraying paint. So if you dial it down towards the minus, that's less paint. If you actually go all the way down, no paint comes out. And if you dial all the way up, the plus, way too much paint comes out. So you wanna find a happy medium in between. So this dial is for the amount of paint that flows out of the gun. The best distance away from the object you're painting is 10 to 12 inches. If you're too close, you risk paint dripping down your project. And if we're too far away, it's not enough paint on the surface and it might not spray correctly. So as I tested with the lowest setting amount of paint, Literally nothing came out, so we're just going to slowly make our way up until we find the right settings. As you can see, as we spun the dial up, more and more paint kept coming out, so we just had to find the correct amount of paint. And eventually, this is what I set my settings on, and the coverage was nice. It wasn't too much paint, and it wasn't too little. Here's a line I just sprayed. As you can see, the thickest part of your spray is in the center and it begins to feather out the further it goes. So when you're going back and forth spraying furniture, you don't wanna spray here in the center and then jump to the top of where it feathers. You wanna kinda of meet in the middle, so say this is the center of your spray, your next coat, you want it to be in the center, between the center of the spray and the top of the feather. So about right in the middle here is the middle of your feather and that, that'll give you the even, smooth finish that look that you're going for with furniture. So that's a big tip for spraying furniture with an HVLP spray gun. So to quickly explain the spray patterns, this is a horizontal setting which sprays a vertical spray and this is great for going back and forth the project. And this is the vertical setting that shoots a horizontal spray, which is perfect for going up and down a project. And here's the photo from the manual of the spray patterns. Just you can pause and take a look just to get a better understanding. I also purchased the large spray tent. I didn't measure or anything. I just kind of added to cart when I purchased the gun. I said why not try the full experience but I didn't realize it was so big and it was quite large in my garage but I set it up for the first coat, tested it out. It was pretty cool. I think it would be pretty good if you're painting outside and you want some extra protection but in the garage it was just too big and I don't need it so I'll use it if I ever need to spray somewhere outside. All right let's finally get started on spraying some furniture. Let's get started on the first coat. I already have this piece prepped and what I like to do when I'm spraying a piece I like to get started on spraying the back if you're not sure how your spray pattern is going to work so I just started spraying the back just to see how everything would turn out and everything seemed fine and then we can get started on the rest of the project. All right now we're going to get started on the sides. We're going to start from the top going side to side until we make it to the bottom. Here we go.
So now we're moving on to coat two. I usually do a light sanding uh, throughout the project just so the paint adheres better. But as you can see, the top here, I actually fully sanded it again with the 220 grit sanding paper with my random orbital sander, just because the first time I rushed the sanding and it, you can see it through the paint and it didn't look good. And that's the most important part of this piece. But this coat went on so good. Just look how nice and smooth it looks. It's gonna dry so nice. And let's not forget we sprayed the drawers too. So onto the cleaning process, basically I just unhook the container and I dump the paint back into the original can. And then I take the dirty tube piece off and throw that into the dirty uh, container. And I go to the sink and clean that up completely. And I put that back on the gun with water in it and then spray it into a container. And then I take the gun to the sink, I just scrub the spray tips and inside the gun so there's no paint stuck inside. There's also a home right rapid clean tool that you can get for the gun. It just hooks up to a threaded faucet and it flushes your gun way faster than doing the full cleaning process without it. So I think I'll end up getting that after using this gun a bit more. So I said in the beginning of the video that it was cool that the container came with a lid, but since you're only given one container and no flush kit, it's kind of pointless in the, in the box unless you purchase another container or you purchase the flush kit because you can't cap off your paint because you need the container to clean the gun in between coats. So that really didn't make sense to me. Anyways, let's move on to protecting furniture. I like to use polycrylic in the spray gun. Simply add it to the container just like you would with paint. I'm using leftover polycrylic that was thinned at about 10% water. It's not required with the Home Right Super Finish Max though. I also lowered the spray dial. I tested spraying on the back first because if you spray too much polycrylic, you'll see drip lines going down your piece. Since I found the correct setting, I got started on my piece. Make sure you do this in super light coats because you will see drips if you don't. It's recommended you spray at least three coats of polycrylic. I always aim for three or four just to make sure my piece is going to be durable. After we're done spraying, don't forget to clean your gun, but then all we need to do is add the hardware and our piece is finished. And let me show you this nightstand before we use the home right sprayer. And this is what it looks like after. Overall, the home right super finished max was super easy to use. I recommend it for beginners or advanced painters because I couldn't believe how easy it was to use and it sprayed efficiently and it gave me a nice finish on this nightstand. For the price, you can't go wrong with this spray gun. It is rather low compared to other spray guns I've used. So if you're looking to get started testing spray guns, I highly recommend this one. And just a disclosure, this is not a sponsored video. I literally purchased this on Amazon to test myself. I've seen this gun a handful of times. So just throwing that out there. <laughs> well, I hope you guys like this video. And if you do want to see more furniture painting product reviews or anything like that let me know in the comments thanks for watching everyone